In this problem, we have a circular industrial disc sander with radius 1 meter, and it has a moment of inertia about g of 0 0.5 kilograms meter squared. It is rotating at a speed of 1,100 RPM just after it's been disconnected from the power source. Uh, at this time, a block of wood is pushed against the sander with a constant force um, at a distance of five centimeters from the center of the sander G, um, so that this disc slows down. Um, this disc takes 20 seconds uh, to come to a complete stop, and we are asked what is the force um, that is required um, to stop this disc in exactly 20 seconds. Um, there are no friction loss, other frictional losses on the disc other than um, this block that we are applying to slow it down and we can take the uh, coefficient of friction to be 0 0.8 again between the block and uh, the disc. So this is uh, clearly an angular momentum problem and um, we're gonna look at the two different states right so we start uh, at a state where we have this disc spinning with omega, uh, omega 1, and um, and that is the initial state. We're given this omega over here, that's, uh, you, you can derive it from 1,100 RPM, um, and, and that state is, is defined. Now, what happens is we get to a final state, state 2, where this angular momentum, um, or this angular velocity, uh, slows down until 0. So at the final state, state 2, omega equals to 0, which also means we will have no angular momentum, right? Because angular momentum is I omega, and um, we have no angular velocity. So um, what happens in between those two states? Well, what we're doing is we are applying an angular impulse, right? Um, we are applying a force uh, over time, and um, this is slowing down the um, disc. Now, what is slowing down the disc? We are applying a force in the direction of um, into the page, right? Uh, of in the direction of that piece of wood. But what's actually slowing down the disc is a force of friction that points equal and opposite to the direction of motion. Um, so this is the force of friction that is generated from the normal force or the contact force between this brick of wood and the disc. So let's start writing that down and, and first write a free body diagram to see what is happening. So we have g at the center of the disc, this is the center of gravity, and we have omega, the angular velocity of the disc um, with which the disc is spinning, right? At this point here, we'll call this point of contact point P, which is located a distance of d from the center of gravity. Um, this point here is where we, the center of where we apply the brick, or the block of wood, right? And this point is where we apply, essentially, where that load is applied. So where the force, F, is applied. Now, I've drawn it dotted because this force goes into the page. Okay, so you can also look at it as um, essentially a cross, right into the page, right? Because our coordinate system, x to the right, y positive, and then z is going to um, be out of the page with a positive rotation that way, um, and this is z out of the page. So we know that um, at point P, we have force F. Now this is not exactly force F, this is force F due to the normal force, right? So when we apply um, this block of wood, um, we're actually applying a force with our hand on the end of the block of wood, on this end, right? On this face. What's happening is this block of wood um, is then touches the disc, and um, a normal force equal and opposite to F is generated onto this block of wood uh, to balance it, right? And to balance this force on the block of wood, there is going to be an opposite force of F 
um, that points in the same direction as f and has the same magnitude of f but onto the disk. So this is due to that normal force. Now this force is acting a distance uh, at a distance d away from the center um, of the disk, so the center of gravity and about which this the disk is spinning. Um, so this will generate a moment and this will come in uh, later um, in a second. Um, with our um, angular impulse. Um, but why is this force F generating a moment? Because this force F is not, um, itself is not, it, it, it's generating a moment um, about the y-axis, right? It is spinning everything in the y-axis in this direction. But we're not interested in that moment. We're actually interested in the moment caused by the force of friction due to that um, force, right? Um, so, where the force of friction in this case um, points upwards because it is going to be opposite to the direction of the velocity. So if we have the angular velocity pointing in the clockwise direction, we are going to have a velocity uh, at point P, which I'll just draw um, a bit offset, that points downwards. So this is VP, right? Uh, I drew this offset just to declutter the diagram, but again, this vector would be located over here, right? Velocity points down, so we have our force of friction pointing in the opposite direction. That means it points up. And this force of friction, this is the force of friction that is causing a moment um, in the xy plane or around z, right? So this moment is twisting everything about the z axis like that. So why is this important? Well, because we know if we look at angular momentum and conservation of angular momentum, we know that um, we're starting from an angular momentum of hg1, right? This is when we have an initial velocity, um, an initial angular velocity, plus uh, delta hg, um, and this is from 1 to 2, is equal to h g 2. And in this special case we can cancel out h g 2 because we know that the angular velocity is zero at our, our final point and therefore there is no angular momentum. Right? Now what is this term over here? Well this term over here is defined as delta h g 1 to 2 is equal to the sum of the integral from t1 to t2 of the moment in dt. And why do we have a sum here? Well, this is because um, if there were multiple moments, we'd have to sum up all the contributions from all the moments. In this case, there's only one, so we can eliminate this sum over here and just take care of the one moment. Now, what is this? This is the angular impulse. Right? Um, this is the integral of the moment in time. And in this case, this moment will be constant because this force, this force of friction here, and this radius here are not changing in time. So the moment will be constant in time. And so this is essentially the moment multiplied by the time that this moment is acting. Right? So this is the angular impulse. So the change in angular momentum is from state one to state two is equal to um, that angular impulse due to that moment, right? So um, given these equations, let's now find um, the values for hg1 and delta hg1 to 2, and then uh, as a function of the applied force f, and then solve for this applied force f, assuming conservation of angular momentum. So Looking at our free body diagram, we know that this force of friction, um, F of F, is equal to mu k times F, right? That force, that normal force, F. Um, and so we can, we now have uh, the force of friction as a function of our kinetic friction con uh, coefficient, which is given, and the value of f that we are trying to solve for. Um, the next thing to do is to define h, right? So what is h g? h g is equal to i g omega, 
right? And this would be a vector equation. Um, and um, in this case, um, we can get rid of the vector um, because um, we're going to solve everything in terms of, of scalars. But what this, what we need to find here is this ig, right? Because in the initial state, we know the angular velocity. We need to find uh, the mass moment of inertia about g, so about the point where everything is spinning. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. So ig is equal to 0 0.5 kilograms meter squared, because that is given in the question. All right, the last thing we need to figure out is omega. And uh, omega, we're also given in the question, but we're given omega in RPM, and we need to convert this into uh, radians per second. So omega 1 is equal to um, 2 pi r times 1,100 RPM divided by 60. And this is going to be equal to 115.2 radians per second. We're also given in the question that omega 2 is equal to 0. And that's why we made the assumption that Hg2 is equal to 0. Right? So now we can. Um, we can find the initial uh, angular momentum. So Hg1 is equal to 0 0.5 kilograms meter squared times 115.2 radians per second. This is equal to 57.6 kilograms meter squared per second. And this is going to be our value for uh, the initial angular momentum. Now let's try and solve for this term, uh, the angular impulse. So we know that um, we can get rid of that sum. So the integral from t1 to t2. And we know t1 and t2. t1 we're going to set at the 0 time step. And t2 is going to be the 20 second time step because that is, is given in the question. We're applying this moment for 20 seconds of the moment in dt is equal to. So we can pull this moment out, right? We can pull it out of the integral because we said it's constant. So the moment from t1 equals to 0, t2 equals to 20 seconds in dt, right? Because we said that this moment does not change with time. So what we can do now is just multiply the moment um, by 20 seconds times the time, right? The delta t. Um, so this integral here just becomes that 20 second, right? So that's why I have m times 20 seconds just to keep the units consistent. This is equal to that. So now we need to find this moment. What is the moment? Well, m is equal to r cross f, right? This is the general definition. What is uh, the specific moment in this case? This is r of p with respect to g crossed to that force of friction, f of f, right? So it's going to be the cross product between this force over here and, uh, you draw it in red, this radius over here, r of p with respect to g. Right? So we can clearly see that these forces are 90 degrees apart. So there's a 90 degree angle over here. And um, so we can see that this force, or this radius crossed to this force over here, is going to give a vector um, that points into or out of the page to get the third component to be perpendicular. Um, and um, this, so this moment will be turning around Z, either clockwise or anti-clockwise, but it's going to turn around Z. Um, and so we can turn this um, vectorial equation over here 
into just a scalar equation by ignoring uh, the vectors since everything will be at 90 degrees and we have confirmed that everything is rotating about this uh, z-axis which is what we're doing with the sum of angular momentum about right so we can turn this into m being equal to um, r which is just going to be d right because this uh, r of p with respect to g is just this distance d and we said we're just multiplying the magnitudes times uh, the force of friction which we said is mu k times f um, and then we have that we can take this plug it into there and get that uh, the delta hg from 1 to 2 is equal to d mu k f times 20 seconds. And so we've now come up with a definition for this term over here. Okay, so now we can put everything together into this master equation over here. So we're going to equate this term with this term and solve for the force f. So let's go ahead and do that. We have that 57.6 kilograms meters squared per second is equal to 0 0.05 meters times 0 0.8, which is our friction coefficient, times F times 20 seconds. Uh, and therefore, F is equal to 72 newtons. And in the vectorial form, F is equal to 72 newtons in the negative k hat direction. And this is our final answer for the problem.